A rhino gets a repaint. Here's a look at the NECA Toys Aliens Rhino Alien version 2. The Rhino Alien is back, and better than ever. With a brand new paint deco based on the variant release, the NECA team took inspiration from Kenner's classic design and transformed it into an all-new modern behemoth featuring all of today's detail and articulation. Rhino Alien measures approximately 10 inches and has a massive ramming horn for attacking its unlucky prey. Before we charge into the review of the Rhino Alien version 2, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how big this behemoth actually is. While I'm kind of getting this all in order, I'd like to as well thank the folks over at NECA Toys that provide the sample of Rhino Alien version 2 that we could have a look at in this review. The Rhino Alien is available right now in retail stores and online as well. Now, there are technically a couple of configurations that you can go by. I mean, really, you could stand this upright, though there will be some plaguing problems with the back of its ankles. Talk more about that in a second. But the most practical way of displaying the Rhino Alien is having it on all fours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of base it on this and then figure out how big it is going from there. First, I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate to the very top of its domed hel helmet or domed head. According to this, the Rhino Alien version 2 is 7 inches tall. Switching that over to centimeters. Then the Rhino Alien is 18 centimeters in height. Now, of course, we can beeline back to inches. Just like that, switch it back over, uh, modern technology. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to, I guess, the back of its hind legs. And I'm going to basically put my hand right here just as an obstruction point, stopping the laser so it doesn't go and shoot across the room. I'm going to stop it right there. So from the back of its hind legs to the front of its horn, the Rhino Alien is in fact 10.7 inches long. Switching that over to centimeters, then it is 27.2 centimeters in length. But this would be the most practical way of displaying the Rhino Alien. Simply just because when you take it out of the packaging, it doesn't have the available means on the back of its hind legs to straighten up. Sure, you could try. You can straighten out the legs like this. You can bend out the legs and make them straight. But the stopping point is really going to be this point right here. Because there is no articulation on the back of the hind leg, you then can't go any further past that point and straighten it out any further. So really, in a case like this, short of it actually just sitting on its ankles, which would be rather awkward to look at, certainly would be a lot painful, a lot more painful for the Xenomorph to actually do that, you really will want to display it on all fours. It does have one removable part, and that is the part of its domed helmet, or I keep saying helmet, certainly the top of its domed crest. You can see it's got some nice cracks going for it. Not only is it airbrushed rather nicely, because it's using a somewhat bluish tinted translucent plastic, it seems to be a lot more darker in color up the middle of the spine and at the outer edges of it. And then again, you've got that nice dark panel lining representing the cracks that have formed on the dome. To attach this to the Rhino Alien, simply all you're going to do is take this hole, line it up to the spike located on the back, fit that over place, over top, and then that basically just sits to the front. It doesn't really have a locking place. There's no tabs that connect it in place, and there really is no friction preventing this from simply just falling off. Depending on how you're displaying this, occasionally if you are picking this someone up, you may find the dome just inadvertently falling off. I guess technically we could leave it off for the time being to show you guys the detailing. On the interior, it does have some exquisite looking coloring here. Now this is the version 2 Rhino Alien, so essentially this is just the orange alien that we looked at before, just done in a bluish tint. At the time of this review, sadly, I couldn't find that orange-colored version 1 Rhino Alien to do a comparison, but it literally is the exact same mold, just colored differently. All the places that you would see done in black have carried over from the original one, and simply all the colors that were originally orange have now gone to this very pearl-colored metallic blue, and boy, does that ever look super nice. But like I said, the detailing on this is fantastic. Somebody had asked me not too long ago what was my one of my favorite alien figures that NECA put out. And generally, you know, I'm usually somebody that likes to go with the Kenner designs, simply just because they're thinking outside the box, and it allows them to get a little bit more creative with their designs. I think my favorite, one of my favorites, is the Rhino Alien. 
The question then would be whether I have my favorites being sitting on the version one or the version two. You know, I have to say, while I do like the orange, I think the blue looks really good on this figure, all the sides that you see of it. Uh, certainly as we get a closer look at the face sculpt there. A face only a mother alien, queen alien, I guess, could love. It does have an open mouth that you can open up just like that. And it does actually have an inner jaw, a smaller mouth inside, though it is very difficult to pull that out. You can see the detailing on the inside of the mouth right there. I gotta feel like NECA enjoys the, the Kenner line of alien predator figures because, again, it gives them something different to work with. I mean, again, there's always the movie xenomorphs and the movie yauchas, but I gotta think that they have more fun when it comes to designing, sculpting, and painting the more Kenner-themed figures when it comes to, again, the xenomorphs and the predators. Again, nice detailing on the head sculpt there. So again, when it comes to really posing this, really what you want to do is you want to be just bending the arm like this, having it straight upright and on its hind legs like this. And then of course you'll just want to bend the back, bend the back knees, and then just get those situated to the point where it looks like it's comfortable enough for the alien to be sitting on all fours like that. I have one issue when it comes to the rhino alien. It's this part right back, right at the back legs here. There is a section I noticed on the figure and it's right around here. Let me just bring these legs down right here. Is it just me, or does that kind of look like a ghoulish face? Eyes, nose, mouth? Why do I keep trying to find faces when it comes to NECA's uh, sculpts or just figure sculpts? It kind of does look a little bit like a face to me. Anyways, though, they do a lot for a little bit of clearance. You can see there's a gap between the thighs and, I guess, the lower torso here. But I've noticed when, you, when it comes to rubbing the legs, you see how it hits the sides of the lower torso. I've already had this happen a couple of times where if twisting it too quickly and forcing against that friction, I've inadvertently just popped the back legs off. They're comfortable. They're sitting on ball joints, but it just means a lot more work when it comes to popping them back into place. I don't know if it's just me as well, but I find like the coloring reminds me very much like RoboCop 2. Is that a strange analogy and strange comparison to be making that it reminds me of a RoboCop? Certainly when I'm looking at like the color scheme here, the blues, it's not simply just blue. There's some purple at play here as well. And actually a couple of different shades of blue working as well. Just to flip the figure up so you can see how it looks on the underside. While they have painted this area, the torso, the legs, of course, there are one, there are a few little areas that get left off the paint. For example, the backs, the undersides of its paws. Would you call those paws? We'll go ahead and just call them legs. This area right here stays and remains black, but at least it's painted. They just don't add any additional blue to it. And I really don't think it necessarily needs blue on that area anyways. Even the interior of its form, I really don't think it necessarily needs that blue. There's enough blue going around that I don't feel like paint got left off deliberately. I think everywhere that you look on it, short of a few little places like the top of its spine, for example, again, I'm seeing a face, eyes, maybe a mustache, a nose. I'm going crazy here. But again, like this area right here doesn't get a lot of additional blue. Does it really need it? I don't think it necessarily does. Like I said, there's more than enough blue going on on this piece. Let's go through the articulation now on Rhino Alien version 2. So it would be the same as the original. Boy, that's a great looking head sculpt. The mouth does open and close. And if you do have the available way of getting out the smaller mouth, it's just a little bit more difficult to pull out. These are small, softer teeth as well. So getting that finagled out might be a little bit more difficult. But the mouth does open and close. It does have the top ball joint. So let's just grab it from the side so you guys can see it here. The head moves forward by quite a bit. And it also moves back as well. You can also swivel the head back and forth. But the thing you will want to be careful of is the side tubes, of course, on the back of its torso. If you move the head further forward, then it doesn't seem to want to hit those. If you have the head, obviously, as you can guess it, further back, then moving it back and forth, it's going to hit those side tubes just on the sides of it. Love the detail on this. As for the arms, or the legs in this case, legs move forward and back. They actually are on hinges. Let me just bring them out so you can see them here. There's the hinge right there on the inside that will allow the arms to hinge out this way. Almost a full, I guess what you could consider, a 45 degree angle if you're looking at it straight this way. It does move forward and back. And of course, the back of it has a double hinge on the elbow. In fact, you can see the pegs working right there. There's one peg, one peg right there, allowing for a double hinge on the elbow on the leg. In addition to that, you can take the 
like the paws, the claws. We'll stick with claws. You can rotate those all the way around like this. You can hinge these back and forth. And you can also independently move the two front fingers back and forth like this. Then when it comes to the torso, I kind of feel like I'm also dealing with a lobster. You know, when you go to a restaurant, and you get a full-size lobster. It happens very few and far between, believe you me. That rotates back and forth. It also moves up and down, so there's a ball joint working there. And then, of course, when we get to the complication of the legs, the legs do move forward and back, but as it hits this section right here, I don't know if you can actually hear it, but there is friction. Sometimes there's not enough friction to pop the legs off. In other cases, there are there is enough friction that when I have moved the legs forward, it just pops it off the ball joint. Nothing broken. It's just a case of me having then to pop the legs back into place. But those do move back and forth. They do hinge out as well. Just a little bit of a hinge. Then the back of the leg, there's one hinge right there, what you could consider to be its knee, and then a secondary hinge right at the back there. So there's two. This step, this area here has to be forfeited in favor of just the fact that it's been sculpted in place. And then the back foot moves back and forth like this. And you can also ankle pivot. Would you consider that an ankle pivot? We'll stick with an ankle pivot. There is also technically peg holes on the undersides of its pads. Undersides of its... I really don't know at this point what to call these. We'll just stick with paws. We'll stick with paws. Um, there is actually no articulation on the front here, but I guess it doesn't technically need it. I'm kind of strained, kind of perplexed, actually, why it has it on the back. It's not for the case that it needs it for stability. I mean, really, when you're putting it on display, just getting the legs straightened out like that, bring them forward like this, and then bring the legs forward to adjust them accordingly until you get the desired look that you want. I kind of like the fact that they do have the back ankles as something that has pivots to them. It sort of aids to help get them into the proper placement and just adjust these down accordingly. And then, of course, you can then go ahead and take the dome, fit it back over top of that spike. And you got yourself a pretty nice looking rhino alien. Granted, yes, it's the same rhino alien that we got before with version one, although I don't know if you would call the first one being version one, but it's basically just a repaint. A repaint that I think does things almost even better. I like the orange, but I think maybe the blue and sticking with the idea that traditionally I think of xenomorphs as having blues and, you know, browns and stuff like that. I think it kind of works a little bit better for the collection. It's just, again, a matter of preference. And one good thing is if you missed your chance on getting the version one rhino alien and don't want to pay the prices of picking this one up online after the fact, at least version two is available right now in retail stores and online. And I think it's almost got a cooler looking color scheme, if you ask me. One last part I certainly wanted to add to this review in case somebody had picked this up for themselves or was curious to pick up the Rhino Alien and asked, is it possible to get the Rhino Alien to actually stand on its hind legs? The answer, and certainly the proof is in the pudding looking at you right now, that yes, you can in fact have the Rhino Alien version 2 standing on its hind legs. It's not that difficult to do really, although when you see it from the side, you can sort of now see why those hind legs, they just can't bend right there. A lot of it's going to be supporting its weight. But it does, in fact, give you the available means if you want to have the rhino aliens. A little foreign for me to be seeing the rhino aliens standing like this, because I would just expect to have the rhino alien in a more charge pose. But you can pose it like this if you wanted to. It certainly does, does also then justify why there's specifically peg holes on the undersides of just these feet and not the hands themselves. It's so you can also get a little bit of stability. You know, surprisingly enough, also with the hind legs being locked in place like this, or at least the back ankles, I would have thought there would have been a more difficult time of getting it to stand upright, but quite the contrary. It seems to stand a lot better than maybe some of the other alien figures. Maybe a lot of it has to do with the fact that while these are articulated, at least in the knees, the back section being locked like this sort of then gives it a much more stable footing when it comes to displaying it. So again, in case you're curious as to whether you could have it on its hind legs, if that's the way you want to display it, then the answer to that question is yes. Yes, you can display the Rhino Alien version 2 up on its hind legs, exactly as you're seeing right now. So frequently I get this question from you, the viewers, what's your favorite predator or what's your favorite alien? And you know, a lot of times the answer I give you guys probably surprises you because you would expect me to say something from the movie verse. 
Right now, for example, my favorite Yauch is probably still the Lost Predator. It's not to say that they haven't put out some really good Predators as of late, but my favorite right now is still the Lost Predator, not technically from the movie-verse. And certainly when it comes to Xenomorphs, I don't tend to think of my favorite Xenomorphs are the ones from the films. Don't get me wrong, I, I think everybody still loves a big chap. Or, for example, an alien warrior. But for me, the ones that stand out the most are the ones that they pull from the Kenner line of yesteryear. These Kenner-inspired aliens and predators are some of my personal favorites because they're not your traditional-looking alien or not your traditional-looking predator. I mean, case in point, look at Rhino Alien version 2. You could still imagine this to be something that would inhabit a movie-verse, and yet it's still different enough that it's not your traditional-looking xenomorph. It sort of looks like an alien warrior that's juiced up on steroids. Of course, you... Look at the just the proportions of this with the larger hind legs, the larger spouted tubes sticking out from its torso, and the very elongated head sculpt that has the horns not only on the back, but also on the front for ramming. It's definitely a very different looking alien, but it's one of my personal favorites. So again, going back to those frequently asked questions, your favorite alien, your favorite predator, one of my favorite aliens is actually the rhino alien. Just again, I'm not really sure whether I like the orange one better or if I like the blue version too. I do though like the, the cooler color schemes of the rhino alien version too though. Question for you, the viewing audience though, is what is your favorite alien and what's your favorite predator that NECA toys have put out in the last several years? love to see your question, your answers down below. If you guys are also new to this channel, enjoying all the content and loving the fact that we had a look at the Rhino alien, hit this video with a like and make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on and make sure, yes, you're coming back to this channel on a regular basis because there always will be some new alien reviews coming your way as this is my bread and butter. This is the stuff I love the most. And I love NECA stuff, so this is always stuff that's going to be finding, you're going to be able to find on this channel. Tons of new aliens, tons of new predators, tons of new NECA reviews. A big thank you, by the way, to the folks over at NECA that provided the sample of Rhino Alien version 2 that we could have a look at in this channel. Some good news, though, if you guys are interested in picking this piece up for yourself, this behemoth is currently available. It's not called behemoth, though, so if you're looking for the packaging, it's going to be Rhino Alien doesn't even actually say version 2 on it, but it's the blue color-schemed Rhino Alien. Is available right now in retail stores and online as well. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.